Will new AI technology like ChatGPT destroy all the jobs for data analysts, data scientists, financial analysts, and the like? Well, we already know from the movies that over the next hundred years, the robots are gonna take over the world and farm us for our body heat. But that's our grandkids' problem. What about over the next five, 10, 20 years? Well, I believe that not only is AI not gonna take over our jobs, but it's actually gonna make us more powerful than ever. And if you're a new analyst just getting into the field, it's gonna give you some huge opportunities. Now, this fear of technology taking over all the jobs is not new. It's been with us at least since the Industrial Revolution, and it never really happened in the past the way that people were afraid of. People were afraid that the farming machines were gonna take away all of the farming jobs and that the sewing machines were going to take away all of the textile manufacturing, etc., etc. But if you look at what actually happened, what happened was that the same people that were farmers or the same people that were sewing clothes, they learned to use the same technology and multiply their output, become more effective, more efficient. So one person, one farmer could now create 10 times as much food as a farmer in the past, utilizing the new farming technology. One person with a sewing machine could create a lot more clothing than a person that had to use a needle and thread. The same thing is true with analysts. When we learn to use the new equipment, when we learn to use the new technology, we're just gonna be that much better at our jobs. Now, that said, that might reduce the number of people, the number of jobs, right? Like, so if a farmer, for example, can create 10 times the crop with a new technology, well, that means that you don't need nine out of 10 farmers all of a sudden become an unnecessary. And we have actually seen that, right? The number of farmers in the world has gone down and down and down as each farmer becomes more efficient. And something similar might happen with analysts as well, except that there's a different factor. With farmers, there's the number, the amount of food consumed per person doesn't really change very much. There's kind of an upper limit. Like there's only so much food that you can fit into your stomach. Whereas with data, we don't have that constraint, right? The amount of data per person is just expanding exponentially every single day. And so the amount of data that each data analyst is gonna be able to deal with is going to go up, right? Which is gonna reduce the, the number of data analysts that are needed. But on the other hand, the amount of data in the world, the amount of data to be analyzed is looks like it's going to continue going up and up and up so that it counterbalances. And if you think about what's going on and what's planned for the future, well, everything's connected to the internet now, right? People are connecting their refrigerators and their coffee machines to the internet and everything is tracked at all the time and people have their little Fitbit watches that are showing what their heart rate is at every moment and how many steps they're taking at every moment. And I don't really think this is a good thing, by the way. I'm just commenting on what's happening. I think it's kind of stupid to have your coffee maker hooked up to the internet. Like, for what benefit is that? What benefit is, do you have your, your refrigerator or your washing machine hooked up to the internet? And, you know, it requires Wi-Fi, which is really, really bad for your health to have Wi-Fi signals going through your body at every hour of the day, which most people don't know. Um, there's quite a lot of research on this, actually, but it's not well publicized. But anyway, that's a subject for the, another video. The point is the amount of data is growing exponentially. And you know, if the world controller types like the Bill Gateses of the world get their way, then we'll all have chips in our bodies that are communicating everything about us to the corporations or the government, or, or really they're basically the same thing at this point, but it's communicating everything about what you ate for dinner and your heart rate and your blood chemistry and everything about you. And again, I don't think this is a good thing, right? Like I may be a data nerd, but I still support your right to privacy, so I don't want to see this happening, but it seems to be where the world is headed unless we can stop it. And you might have noticed too that analysts are already using technology. We already have technology and automation that is taking over a huge amount of our work. If you think about how would you do your job if you didn't have Excel or Tableau or Power BI or any of these tools and like you had to do all of your analysis using a pen and paper? How much less efficient would you be, right? Like how many people would be necessary just to do your job alone? Right, it'd probably take like 100 people just to do your job, right? So these tools, the Excels and the Power BIs and whatnot, they have taken over a huge amount of, the, of that work and made us as analysts so much more efficient. And yet, even despite all those advancements, data analyst jobs have not gone away. In fact, they're growing every single year. The point is that these tools make you and me better analysts, we're better at our jobs, we're more efficient, we can ask for more money, by the way, because we're doing more work. But here's the important point, you have to learn to use it. 
right? You have to adapt to the new ecosystem. You have to adapt to the new technology. You have to let it make you a better analyst, make you more efficient. You have to become the master of the robots. And if so, you are going to become more valuable and you're going to have a huge leg up over all of the analysts that do not adapt, that keep using the old ways and don't use the new stuff that's coming out that can make them more effective. More and more, this world is crowding out mediocrity. People who are just content to be mediocre are no longer going to be able to make ends meet, right? You have to be better, you have to adapt, you have to grow or else you're gonna die. So learn the new tools, embrace it, understand how they work, let them make you a better analyst, let them make you more efficient, and then put it on your resume, right? If you're good at using ChatGPT, put ChatGPT on your resume, talk about it in interviews, talk about how you use this new technology that makes you 10 times more efficient than you were in the past. And by the way, if you're a brand new analyst who's trying to get into the field, who's trying to get a job, this is something that's going to set you apart. This is something that's going to make you unique. You are not only a traditional data analyst with traditional analyst experience, but now you're an analyst that has the ability to use this new tool set and perhaps be even more efficient than the people with a whole bunch of experience that are stuck in their ways. And by the way, if you'd like to get into a career as a data analyst, I have a free training where I show you exactly how to do it. I will put a link in the description, and then I highly recommend that you check out this video where I tell you specifically how you can use ChatGPT to become a much better analyst. Check it out, and I'll see you there. Ciao.